Hello, hello, and welcome on over to the Everyday Joy podcast. I'm your host, Joy Ravella. Now, we've got a recurring pool of regular guests, and I'd highly encourage you go back and listen to uh, the last couple of times Gig was on the show. She shared some really great stories around her upbringing. Um, she wasn't born into a Christian family. She basically had to carve out her own faith journey, and um, she talked a lot about that in previous episode. So if that's your story, I hope that hearing Gig's story today and hearing how far she's come can encourage you to know that you don't have to be born in a Christian household to live a life that reflects the joy of being a Christian, the joy of being part of God's family. And I have so much respect and love for Gig. I know you are going to love all the conversations this week. Let's get into it. Be brave, be strong, don't give up. Expect God to get here soon. I have got Gig here in studio with me. Hello, Gig. Hello. You are sporting a complete... <laughs> like, we usually talk about your glasses. Yes. Um, amazing glasses, but I feel like they come second to your bright red hair. Okay. Looks amazing. Thank you. They I, match my yeah. They so do the same colour as my glasses. <laughs> so you see me coming from a kilometre away now. That's yeah. right. Well, I've always wanted red hair, but for me, having dark hair, I've yes. got to bleach it first, yes. and then I've got to dye it. But I'm excited. I'm actually excited to go grey. I'm actually excited to whatever my hair colour turns because it'll be easier to colour to your color hair. It. <laughs> and that's exactly me because I had such dark hair. Yeah, and I still do at the back. If you look, you do, I've got yeah, yeah, it's dark at the very bag, dark right at the hair, front. yeah, and so. But I have put some highlights, bleachy bits through, so the colour will grab. Love it, suits you, gig. It's Thank good for you. this time of year. It's a bit of a rainy, cold, miserable day today. <laughs> I just need a change. I'm not sure what to do with my hair, so I just colour it. You always know if I'm not right. It's like she's coloured her hair. I think that's like Something's a universal girl thing. Or you cut a fringe, you cut bangs. Oh yeah. What's going on? Are you okay? What's going Are on? You, you okay? Cut bangs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Tell that's me it. what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're taking a look at Psalm 31, 24. Be brave, be strong, don't give up. Expect God to get here soon. I think for me, Gig, my first impression is this idea of expectation. And I think when you're let down so many times by other people and life in general, just to expect again, like yep. that in itself can be so, so hard to do. So it's an easy verse to read. And for a lot of us, we'll be like, yeah, awesome. I know God's going to get here soon. But for a lot of people, that one word, expect, yes, it's tied into a lot of um, pain and hardship. Mm -hmm. But also on the other side of that, I feel there's so much hope because God is the one person you can have high expectations of. Completely. And he will come through every Always. single time. Always. And Joy, my first thought on this one is, is God in saying, in the tricky times, hang on, keep your eyes on me and I'll get there in the right time. And I think that's the that's the key point, the right time, because mm. we're like, hang on, God, I need this done now. I need it done yesterday. And for me, in my experience, I know things have taken years. And when it finally comes in, then you go, right, I get it now. I had to learn so much on the way. I had to experience the journey because the journey is what changed my life. Yeah. So expect God to be there, but in his time. And I think that's so interesting because, you know, in episode 167, we talked about the journey mm. and how the journey is the important part sometimes, not just getting to the destination. The journey is the gold. Yeah. Not the bucket at the end. Yeah. Absolutely every time, in my experience, definitely. Yeah. Yep. I think we've all walked through some of that stuff. It's hard, though, to be to be in the waiting season, to be in that space. And I think for me, what this verse tells me about God is it tells me how to wait. It yep. tells me the, the characteristics I should embody. I should be brave. I should be strong. I should have that, that sense of resilience and not that um, victim mentality, which yes. for me, honestly, I'm quite a melancholic, reflective person. Yep. And if I don't watch myself, I will slip into that. And so this verse is... It's kind of like, you know, you get like those um, those scenes in the movie where you've got the, the the country dad and he slaps a horse and he's like, come on, you know, you know giddy up kind of thing. <laughs> I feel like that's a little bit like uh, like for me, it's a bit of a slap on the back saying, come on, be brave, be strong, yep. be strong, don't give up, don't forget who you are, expect God to get here soon. And be confident. 
Mm. Be confident in God. And I think that's, for me, that's the key. Be confident. And, yeah, brave and strong, but confident in it. Yeah. Almost smug. It's like, my God, he's got me. He's got my back. So I love that. And you bring that in buckets because of what you've gone through. I yes. know that you've got so many life stories. How has this verse come alive in your world, Gig? Um, I mean, this can be a really hard concept for most humans because relying on other humans is completely impossible. And the the way that this has really come alive is after I had my wilderness time. Mm. And we did the wilderness time in episode 126. Yes. Where I spent a year face down in God's presence. And because that was such a life-changing time, and now I can be smug and go, hang on, it is really horrible. I feel like a jerk. I feel like it's horrible. I'm, it's, it's uncomfortable, but I'm confident because I know and I can say this so confidently that every single time God has showed up, every single time. I may have had a hissy fit or three or four, <laughs> but God has showed up every single time. Mm. And that's how it, it plays out in my life. I had that time where I really understood who God was within myself and I understood how I actually really needed him. Yeah. I know that for a lot of people, the uh, if they haven't got time to go back and listen to episode 126, I would first of all recommend you to do that. Um, but what is a wilderness season and what did that look like for you, Gig? Okay, I went, it was the lowest point in my life um, where I just, everything had let me down. Everyone, everything had let me down and there was nothing holding me together anymore other than God. Mm. So it was a time where I was still doing life. I was still working. I was still, you know, going through the motions, but I'd come home every night and I'd be face down on the floor crying, God, hear me, heal me, see me, hold me, um, and just praise and worship, hours and hours of praise and worship just to get out of my state of mind and just to be connected with God. Mm. And for that person, as we come to the end of today's episode, who's in that wilderness season, who's in that face down sort of moment, as someone who's walked through that, come to the other side of it, if you could go back to that gig in that moment, who maybe was at the start of that year, what would you say to her? Um, it does get better because it's. I, I think your wilderness time is like pregnancy especially your first pregnancy, when is this going to end? Especially the last four weeks. And all the ladies out there who've had their first pregnancies are going, yep, every day is a year. (laughs) And so I would just go back and say, it's coming. And I did have a word over my life. Um, I went to a prophetic meeting Mm. and I did have a word over my life. That was probably halfway through it. And um, that really concreted me stay on the floor. Yeah. Stay in God's presence. Keep your head down. Just bow to him and just praise him because it's coming. And that that word was a confirmation. I think something we don't talk about enough is the power of praise, is the power of singing songs and listening to music that forces you to lift your eyes up to heaven, to lift your eyes up and off all the things that are happening in our lives. It's so interesting that Gig talks about this because... We think when we read this verse, Psalm chapter 31, 24, be brave, be strong, don't give up, expect God to get here soon. We don't naturally think about music and songs and worship. And what I really want to encourage you with is a little mini story in my own life. And I can't go into too much detail because it's not my story. But let's just say I went to Tonga on a missions trip. And it was the most amazing missions trip. I loved it. I learned so much. And when I arrived home, a family member in my time away had fallen very sick. So sick, the doctor said that they would never be able to go back to normal functioning. It was... The worst thing to come home to. But I had come off the back of this incredible mission strip. I had seen God change people's lives. I knew that he could heal. I knew that this was not the end. 
And so I went upstairs and I just blasted the worship music. I'm telling you that that was the hardest decision to make. Every part of me wanted to just fret and worry and ask questions and call up doctors. But I went straight upstairs and I said, the best thing I can do is to praise God powerfully in the midst of my pain. And so I did that. And I just, I I can, if I close my eyes, I can go back to that room and that moment because God met me there. I was face down, tears streaming down my face, worshiping God, declaring his goodness at a time when I should have been doing the opposite. The amazing thing is that a couple of weeks later, they were fully healed and they were back to doing what uh, they were doing for work. And the doctors were baffled, still are baffled, honestly. And if you would look at them, you would never think that that was something that they endured. But here's the thing. I do believe, I do believe that there's something really powerful about praise. I also want to talk about something that that person who was needing the healing did. I remember I walked into their bedroom and I said, what's going on? And they said, I'm writing my testimony as they're sitting there. Uh, it not not healed at all. The healing hadn't yet happened. And I said, what, what do you mean you're writing a testimony? And they said, one day when I'm healed, someone's going to ask me to share a testimony and I want to be ready to say it. And so they had typed out a testimony even before the healing began. And I think that's such a powerful way to live out this verse as well. So whether for you, the application today is blasting that praise music and sharing and shouting out to the world how amazing God is, or whether it's you penning a testimony that has not yet come to pass, yet being the key word, do something today to live out today's verse. Psalm 31, 24. Be brave, be strong, don't give up, expect God to get here soon such an incredible start to the week i'm so looking forward to all the episodes to come with gig catch up again tomorrow on the everyday joy podcast and don't forget to share the podcast with your friends and family and if you haven't already to leave a written five-star review 